Okay, so the second derivative test as a follow-up from the first derivative um, also tells us some things about max and mins, but it goes a little further and talks about the curvature of our graph, uh, specifically points of inflection and also type of concavity. So concavity, uh, your graph can be curved in a way such that it's concave up, which is kind of like a bowl facing up, or concave down, like a bowl facing down. And it's a pretty easy relationship. I'll talk more about it specifically later, but it's concave up if your second derivative is positive, and it's concave down if the second derivative is negative for a particular interval. If you're not sure what a point of inflection is, a point of inflection is where it just changes from uh, concave up to concave down or vice versa. And of course, you have to be continuous at C, otherwise it wouldn't preserve that curve. So here we've got a point of inflection. Here we are concave up, concave down, when I switch that point of inflection. We can also use the second derivative test to tell us uh, if a function has a max or a min. Um, and it's basically this. So if we know that we have a derivative that gives us a zero, so a zero derivative value, remember, if we have something that has a zero derivative, then that means that we have a horizontal tan. Furthermore, if we then talk about the second derivative, for example, if the second derivative is negative, then that would mean that at this particular value, then that would mean our graph looks concave down, which would create a maximum. And if we had a second derivative that was positive, let's say this one has a positive second derivative, then our graph would be concave up, thus creating a minimum. So we can use this second derivative to test for whether it's a max or a min using concavity. So let's take a look at this. This first one that gives us an f of x asks us to use the second derivative to find the local extrema and then discuss concavity. Okay, so let's find the derivative of this graph, of this function. And I'll also find the second derivative while I'm at it, since I know I'm going to use it. Okay, so my critical numbers of my first derivative, if I factor this, and then furthermore, all right, those zeros are at 0, 1, and negative 1. So if I've got a little number line of my first derivative, I've got zeros at negative 1, 0, and 1. I could also test for changes in increasing and decreasing intervals, but we can come back to that. Now, using my second derivative, if I factor that, I can bring out a 4. Oops, 3, excuse me. Set that equal to 0. So I have 1 equals 3x squared. Divide both sides by 3. Square root plus or minus root 3 over 3. That's just this rationalized. Don't forget your plus or minus. OK, so these points where it could change, these, these zeros here, guys, these are possible points of inflection or POIs. So above my number line, or below it, however you want to do it, I guess we'll do below. Below my number line, I can graph these values, root 3 over 3. And root 3 over 3 is less than 1. So I'm going to graph negative root 3 over 3 somewhere in between here. And I'm going to graph positive root 3 over 3 somewhere here. So this is looking at points of possible points of inflection. So now, if we test our intervals, we'll know when we're concave up and when we're concave down. So for example, if I plug in something smaller than negative root 3 over 3, like negative 1, to my second derivative. So I'm going to plug, I'm plugging in these values into my second derivative to test for concavity. So again, if I plug in a negative 1 here, I end up with a negative number. So that means this section is concave down, which if you can imagine, if this is concave down, your graph's going to look like this, OK? In general, again, it doesn't perfectly hit the x-axis, but it is concave down in that section. Um, if I plug in 0, I end up with something positive, which means that section's concave up. And if I plug in 1, I'm back to being negative concave down. So this should help you decide if you have maxes or mins. If you're concave down through this possible, ma this possible um, max or min, concave down would mean that this is a maximum. So I have a local max at x equals negative 1. Uh, because I'm concave up here, that would hit this and go back up. 
which would make it a local min. So I have a local min at x equals zero. And then this is back facing down, which would mean that it reaches a high, and then that's a local max. So you have another local max at x equals one. So once again, if you're a zero of the derivative and you're concave down, you end up being a max. If you are a zero of the derivative and you're up, you're a minimum. And if you're a zero of the derivative and concave down, you're a max again. So you kind of just have to look at your graph and see what's happening. But if you draw the graph, you should be able to see if it's a max or a min. Let's try it again. Now this one just asks to talk about concavity and points of inflection. So I know I need the first derivative and then I'm going to go right into the second derivative. So second derivative ends up being 6x minus 12. So if, it, if I want to talk about concavity, I need to find when my second derivative is 0, which ends up giving me 2. So 2 is where it will change concavity. And then I can test both sides. So let's see if I test like 0 on this side. 0, 6 times 0 minus 12 gives me a negative. So this side's concave down. And then on this side, like a 3 would give me something positive, so concave up. Is there a point of inflection? Yes, it switches from being concave down to con concave up. So you have a point of inflection at x equals 2. And then as far as concavity goes, it's concave down from negative infinity to 2 and concave up from 2 to infinity. Now, for the concavity, we will always use parentheses. Okay? Always parentheses for a concavity, unlike the inclusive brackets we used for decreasing and increasing intervals. Oh, so, okay, so this function already is the first derivative. Pay close attention. What are the coordinates of the points of inflection? Well, points of inflection would be zeros of my second derivative where I change concavity. So 12x cubed minus 36x squared. I need zeros of this guy, so let's factor out a 12 and an x squared. That gives me x minus 3. I've got x equals 0 is a critical possible point of inflection, and x equals 3. So let's graph those. These are possible changes in concavity. So once again, we're going to test our interval. I'm going to test 1. Um, if I test the number 1 here, I get a positive and a negative, so this section is concave down. Um, this section is concave up, and then if I plug in a negative 1, I actually also end up with a concave down. So that means that Let's take a look. We have a point of concavity for sure at x equals 3, or excuse me, a point of inflection at x equals 3, but not at 0 because it doesn't switch. So the only point of inflection is at x equals 3. Okay, this is a calculator question. Um, we're given the second derivative, and the question is just how many points of inflection does it have? Well, remember, first of all, we're only looking from 0 to 3, so that's important to keep in mind. If we already have the, sec the section that is uh, the graph that's the second derivative, and we want to find points of inflection, then we need to see points where the concavity changes from up to down. Or from down to up. So those are the things that we're looking for. Okay, so let's graph this. So I'm plugging in sine of 3x minus cos of x squared. Um, I only want my window to go from 0 to 3, so I'm changing my window to 0 to 3. And let's take a look at the graph. So because my y-axis is so big, it's hard to really see my x-axis. So if I go back to my window, I'm going to maybe make my y-axis go from like negative 3 to 3. Let's see if that makes it a little bit nicer. So as you can see, it looks it definitely looks like it changes. When I say positive and negative, I mean positive being this part, negative being down here. So right here it changes. Um, right here it looks like it changes. Remember, points of inflection also happen um, when they're zero. So you're looking for a zero, but you're also looking for it to change. So the only place that I can't tell for sure if it changes, because here I can see that it goes under and comes back up. So there's one, two, three. But the question is, does it hit and bounce here, or does it actually go through? So I'm going to do a zoom box. And I'm going to do that by, I'm going to move my little cursor um, over to this side. I'll show you how you can do a zoom box. So you're going to start, and you're going to hit enter, and you're going to create a box by opening a particular width. Nope, I don't want to do that. Don't know why it does that. 
So this will zoom to that size so I can clearly see. Oh, yep. It definitely goes up through the x-axis and back down. So it does change from being positive to negative or it is a zero. So again, we're looking for when it changes from positive to negative um, and the der second derivative is a zero. It has to change for it to be point of concavity. So we said including the other three we counted, we also have this four and five. So we have a total of five points of concavity. In this last example, uh, we have a table of values. We say they said it's twice differentiable, which means that it's continuous and you can take the derivative, which of the following must be true. Okay, so um, the first thing that I notice is I go from negative one to five and I start in the negatives and according to my data, I'm kind of going up. But remember, your graph could go up and back down and so on and so forth. This is just a possible set of values. Okay, so let's see. The first one says the derivative equals eight for some value. Well, we've seen this elsewhere in the last few units. This is mean value theorem you only know that the slope between these two values has to be 8 if the slope between negative 1 and 5 is also 8, because remember that's what MBT says. So we can see if that's true by plugging in negative 1 and 5, and we can get those from over here, negative 30 and 18, and then we can find the slope between the endpoints. So here we go, 18 minus negative 30 over 5 minus negative 1 gives me 48 over 6, or eight. Hey, that works. That's actually the true statement. Um, let's take a, look, take a look though at why the others do not work. It says f has no critical points. Well, here's the problem. Because you only have four data points, you don't know if they're a critical point. So there might be, there might not be, but we definitely don't know. It must be true. Let's look at this guy. This one says the derivative is positive, meaning your function's increasing. Well, from the, according to the points, yes, my function is increasing, but how do I know it didn't like dip back down? So again, I don't know this for sure if I just have a few data points. If I had a function, an actual equation, or if I had a graph, I, I would know for sure. This says the second derivative is uh, negative, which means it would be a concave down scenario. Well, again, I don't know that from this. There's no way for me to know just from four points. And the graph has no points of inflection. Well, if I don't know anything about the second derivative, I certainly don't know anything about points of inflection. So the only thing I could talk about was that first one. Okay, so as you're going through and you're doing these problems, just be very careful um, that you're checking uh, for things that are undefined, um, things that are zeros. And also, um, we have if we have a function that's like this, Okay, and maybe it's even, I'm going to add something to the top. Maybe it's 2 times x plus 1 over x. So if this is my original and I take the derivative, so I can look for maxes and mins and whatnot. So let's see, I'm going to actually multiply the top out. It'll be easier to do the derivative that way. So derivative of the top is 2 times the bottom plus the, der uh, plus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So this guy ends up being. 4x plus 2 over x squared. So normally when we take the derivative, we would look for when the top is 0 and the bottom is 0 to get our critical numbers. So our critical numbers, the top is 0 when x equals negative 1 half, and the bottom is 0 at 0. So in class, we've talked about this idea of being a 0 versus being an undefined. This is what I want to point out to you. Then you would check for increasing and decreasing. So I could plug in, let's see, I could plug in 1. I plug in 1 here, I get a positive over a positive. This is a positive. I can tell you right now, this is positive and this is negative. So some people would say, all right, well, it's decreasing from uh, negative infinity to negative 1 half, and it's increasing from negative 1 half all the way to infinity. Um, well, we might have to stop at zero. The way that we can check to see if this is true is by seeing if zero, um, although it's undefined for the derivative, we have to see if zero causes an issue with the original. If it does, we have to leave it out. So would there be a problem plugging zero into the original graph? Yes. Then that means that this needs to be left out. So my increasing interval would have to go from negative one half to zero and then from zero to infinity. All right, good luck with the problem sets.